Uh, hello, welcome to week two of uh, History of Jazz. Uh, so I'm going to read a bit. Again, we're going to go through some more of John Swed's Jazz 101, a complete guide to learning and loving jazz uh, in the context of setting up what we're doing in week two, which is essentially introducing um, a couple uh, seminal recordings um, <clears throat> and figures uh, who fit into this idea of the... Uh, when we talk about the beginnings of jazz, who are we talking about? Um, there are the people we have been talking about, uh, as in collectively, when one looks into uh, any jazz history text, who are the names that we see? Uh, but then there are also um, uh, other names that should be talked about and sort of uh, less neat and tidy chronologies uh, as to who influenced whom, what instrument played the most primary role, etc. So we'll, I'll, I'll include three short lectures this week again. Um, one on Scott Joplin's Maple Leaf Rag, which I'll talk about now. Um, <clears throat> one on Jelly Roll Morton's uh, Black Bottom Stomp. And uh, one on uh, King Oliver's Dipper Mouth Blues. So this one is uh, uh, a short discussion. Uh, again, uh, I'll read a bit from Swed's uh, text about um, Joplin's Maple Leaf Rag, and then we'll talk about uh, what he's talking about and what, 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 we, what we're hearing in the recording, which is on um, our week two YouTube playlist, the first video, Scott Joplin's Maple Leaf Rag. It comes from the Smithsonian collection of classic jazz, which is a sort of seminal, um, you know, several uh, disc, several vinyl, and then several tape, and then several disc, and now several parted, parted parts of uh, streaming selections of um, uh, what the Smithsonian Institute had termed the definitive tracks that define what jazz is and was. This is what, what uh, Swed writes about uh, Maple Leaf Rag. It says, this is the one that set off the craze for rags, published in 1899 and cut as a piano roll in 1916 with the composer allegedly at the piano. Okay, so set off the craze for rags. Well, rags um, are a kind of song that were com was combining, kind of piece of composition, piece of music that was combining... Um, African American and European uh, source materials in its construction, in the construction of a rag. The year of publication is important, published in 1899. Okay, so when we are talking about the history of this music, we are uh, required to make a distinction between uh, history and prehistory. So, why can we talk about this with confidence? Why can we talk about this clearly? Because there is a recording of it, because we can hear what something sounded like that was written in 1899. Not much before 1899, into you know, 1870s, 1880s, when when these other proto jazzes were forming out of African American sources uh, in the rural South and into the uh, various urban centers that uh, African Americans migrated to and and had been in for long before then, um, the combination of those African American sources and European sources that combined to create jazz around the beginning of the 20th century. This is to do with the lack of specificity, again, and the, the imperfection of saying this happened, then this happened by that person, etc. The reason we can talk with any confidence about Maple Leaf Rag is because we have a recording. We know what it sounds like. So uh, it says cut as a piano roll. Could be an interesting research topic for this week. Look into what piano rolls were, what they are, right? Uh, it's allegedly, the composer's allegedly at the piano. Well, uh, it was big business for composers to uh, have their uh, music uh, turned into uh, piano rolls. It was, uh, uh, and as a result, the music could be disseminated um, <clears throat> widely. Um, what is a piano roll? It's a kind of, you know, space age invention circa the late 19th century of essentially automated music, right? Mechanically generated music, but wow, uh, pre-recording history, um, or just during the you know the nascent recording history, there's this uh, form that's sort of um, frozen in time, literally on the roll that the piano plays by itself, right? You see the keys going by itself, check it out. But here's the thing, what is devoid uh, of then in a piano roll or any preconceived, you know, press play and here goes the recording type of document? Well, um, especially a roll is playing it, a person is not playing it. There is no improvisation per se, in Maple Leaf Rag. And there we go. If we're talking about jazz as, well, how do we define jazz? Well, it has improvisation, or it has solos, or it has these various kind of signifying elements to it to say, oh, that's what jazz is. Well, 
in a, in a reevaluation of what jazz is and where it comes from, we, we talk about Scott Joplin and other ragtime composers of the late 19th century and early 20th century um, <clears throat> as creating foundational musics that jazz grew out of, and yet there's no improvisation per se in Maple Leaf Rag. It says, it borrows its form from that of contemporary marches with its four themes arranged in A-A-B-B-A-C-C-D-D -D form with its C or trio theme in a different key offering contrast to what came before and setting up the last theme for a rousing finish. Okay, that's a lot of information. What it's saying is it is organized in multi-part sections. And here's the thing. Broadly speaking, when there is music of Africa and, and its diaspora, which is anywhere where Africans traveled outside uh, of the continent forcibly or otherwise, music of African origins is generally organized in cyclical, informal, no, sorry, cyclical, flexible form, formal structures. By contrast, music that spread from the Western classical European tradition to the Americas, to anywhere in the world that it went, to the, to the diaspora of Western classical uh, European music, is essentially sectional in form, right? If you look at the sonata allegro form, which is, the, for instance, uh, the way most classical music of the mid to late 18th century was put together and into the 19th century, um, <clears throat> it had this. It had a particular form that every composer followed, or most composers followed in creating that form. Similarly, ragtimes were organized in these sectionals in this sectional way. So, what's African about it? What's European about it? Well, what's African about it is the rhythmic impetus, the syncopation that is going on, meaning. In the left hand, gong king, gong king, there are these big strides being played by the left hand, spread out as far as a pianist's pinky and thumb can go, outlining the harmonic motion of the rag. Gong king, gong king, on the beat, on, on, right? At the same time, in the right hand, there are these melodic lines being played by the right hand of the piano. Against bong king, gong king, gong king, gong king, gong people, bo ba, bo people, bo ba, bing, bong people, bo ba, bo people, bo ba. That rhythmic tension of downbeats with upbeats, whether it doesn't matter the register, in the case of most conventional music that is syncopated, often the lower uh, end of it will be uh, expressing, well, anyways, uh, in, rag, in rags, anyways, the, 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 the left hand, the bottom register, the bass register, baritone registers, are, um, and even the top of the tenor register, generally, all that low, you know, middle of the piano and down are expressing downbeat-oriented rhythmic impetus, bonk, 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 and the right hand with those lines that are going across downbeats and including upbeats, sometimes starting on them, ending on them, etc., are emphasizing Bonking, gonking, gonking. I don't know how the, the YouTube video is showing the, the delay here, but one and two and it emphasizes the upbeats, right? That push and pull of upbeat oriented music against downbeat oriented harmonic accompaniment that creates rhythmic tension that is essentially African in nature. Uh, and is essentially one of the formal uh, gifts that ragtime composing, ragtime compositions, uh, <clears throat> bequeathed to uh, jazz composers. And that's, again, a, not a neat line. Composers who were you know, neither called composers nor jazz composers necessarily, band leaders who were playing society gigs, uptown, downtown, wherever they were in New Orleans or other centers in the South, wherever this nascent jazz we keep alluding to was forming, they were playing rags. They were playing other marching band musics of the day. They were playing other African-American inflected, uh, both sacred and secular music, inflected musics of the day. All these mixing bowl worth of ingredients were going into creating jazz. Ragtime was one, you know, kind of lionized element, but nonetheless one element, one form. But so here's, you know, back to Scott Joplin, Maple Leaf Rag, um, and it's, you know, European form plus African-American rhythmic impetus. Says, but it differs from marchers, from marches, excuse me, uh, not just Maple Leaf Rag, but this, but ragtime, the style of composing, differs from marches in the repeat of an A theme before the beginning of the third of the C theme, the contrasting theme in a different key. And it says, and like all rags, in being rhythmically more flexible, with the left and right hand set against each other, there it is, in, in, in syncopated tension, right? The idea, the more groovy something is, the more rhythmic it is. Usually, 
the more the more we, we want to dance. The more people wanted to dance the cakewalk or you know the dance popular dance forms of the day, when the rags were being played, and when early jazz was being played, and into the swing era, all these jazz as dance music, it it succeeded because it was rhythmically vital. It had that syncopated tension to it. So it might be this European organized formal structure, but the contents of those structures, the contents of that structure, in the con in the case of Maple Leaf Rag as an example, is lively, is bouncing. It says this is classic ragtime, the kind that is best known. But hearing uh, some of the more unusual rag forms is also rewarding. Joplin's Solace, a Mexican serenade, for example, provides a rather delicate link to the tango. Uh, and what Jelly Roll Morton called the Spanish tinge, what Sweat is, is pointing out here is that Maple Leaf Rag is an iconic rag, but in fact, rags took on many uh, forms and also instrumentations. I am not by accident beginning this second week uh, with music of uh, two pianists. And composer Scott Joplin, and next the next video, Jelly Roll Morton, and you'll see uh, in the week two playlist uh, there are other pianists to listen to. If we talk about the again the kind of um, <clears throat> uh, most uh, standard ways that jazz history has been sort of discussed, and again this idea of the rise of the solos, very often we talk about the cornet, uh, which is a, 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 a uh, similar to the to the trumpet, uh, the brass that brass instrument in particular as being kind of this integral first voice via King Oliver passed to Louis Armstrong, stylized by Big Spider, Big Spiderback. We'll get to all those names and those ideas, but I'm I'm just saying that in the context of our week two, after last week exploring a little bit of here's some you know here's Sonny Rollins and and, and Coleman Hawkins, the tenor saxophonist explorers of their days. Uh, Rollins again is still with us. Here's Bill Evans whose trio is, is indicative of the way uh, modern jazz groups discuss with each other on the, in the, ba on, on the bandstand, during the, in the, inside the music, right, and blow up hierarchy. In fact, when we go back to the beginning of jazz, we also need to think about it from the piano's perspective. Yes, the cornet and that line of soloist on, with ensemble is vital, and we'll get there. But I appreciate that in Swed's Jazz 101, he makes the point that just like we need to re um, litigate, and you know, if not litigate, re sort of re-examine the facts uh, and not settle for a, uh, an easy chronology. Jazz started with this person at that time, and then moved to the next in this movement and, and that instrument, etc. No, let's instead look at it through the lens of, as it says in the, the course syllabus, is um, th this course is um, course description around the beginning of the 19th century, around New Orleans. Jazz coalesced out of several forms, African-American and European. Here, Scott Joplin's Maple Leaf Rag is both African-American and European-American music. Not necessarily just African and European music. It's African-American music. It's European-American music. It is American music. And there is kind of the crux, really, of what we're talking about. That jazz, as you know, what is uh, hyperbolically referred to often as um, America's great art form, which it is. I think, in fact, the, the word that matters most in that chain is America. Why? Because the America of the industrial age, of the 19th century becoming the 20th century, the musics that combine together out of the popular musics of the day, the sacred musics of the day, the secular musics of the day, the African-American musics of the day, the European-American musics of the day, such as ragtime, such as ring shouts, such as hollers, such as... <clears throat> band marches, such as American light kind of vanilla popular music of the day, Stephen Foster, etc. All those musics joined together, and the musicians playing those pieces, that range of materials on their gigs at uptown and downtown, at high society and low society, you know, uh, different at, at, at dances and at bordellos. Though all those things put together became jazz. And so here, Scott Joplin's Maple Leaf Rag, the first selection on uh, this, you know, the iconically first selection on the Smithsonian Collection of Classic Jazz, the first thing we must talk about, I want to contextualize as vital, but missing, since it's missing that improvisation, particularly, not necessarily indicative of all rags, indicative of ragtime and its most distilled form. But in your research on to what this is about, and after listening to this thrilling lecture, um, Think about what I've said. L listen to it in the context of it not being the only um, 
uh, holy grail of that's where jazz comes from. It's one very important place where it comes from and overlapped with, but is is that it is that. So um, that's uh, some thoughts about Scott Joplin's Maple Leaf Rack.